Good morning, traders. Welcome to the Flow Show, Tuesday, 3rd of October, getting through this year one way or another. Uh, morning, Mr. K-Man. How are you? Aloha. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Good stuff. Good to hear it. Right, uh, right lots of moves uh, going on again. Um, seems that uh, Asia wanted to have some fun and games with the dollar overnight, and uh, that we'll get into. Um, not, nothing out of China. They're on uh, holiday. So their feet up uh, with the um, suntan lotion going on probably. Um, doesn't mean that uh, officials aren't keeping their BDIs on the screens though. Um, but we'll have a look at uh, Dollar China in a bit as well. So firstly for Japan and uh, Japan's Minister for Economics and Trade, Seco says they will mull income and corporate tax cuts according to Kyoto. So since he's some more easing there on the uh, fiscal front from Kushida. Um, Suzuki was out with his usual waffle, uh, no real uptick in rhetoric. However, he did drop in one important line saying that currency levels won't be a factor for any judgment on whether to intervene or not. It's volatility that matters. Um, that is two things we're missing from the intervention playbook at the moment is volatility and uh, dropping in comments about speculation. Now we have been wondering, um, as you'll know from prior shows, as to whether the level of the yen would be a factor. Um, it is something they've mentioned uh, about looking at various indexes previously. We've been following a few ourselves because they have all broken below levels when they last intervened. But while they do look at it, it seems it's not part of the plans for intervention. So we can probably stop all looking at it now. Um, so he's pretty much confirmed we're looking for volatility uh, at the very least to make that step up to finger hovering over the intervention button. Um, what does that mean for the yen? It's potentially a green light um, because if those that were looking at, well, the 150 level as a possible intervention level, that's been blown out the water. So we are, as I said, looking for volatility. That volatility is moving two, 300 pips a day um, or very volatile moves, you know, 100 pips, spikes and drops uh, in sessions, that sort of thing. And we haven't got that. Um, now, those uh, guys and girls who are in our chat room uh, and on, uh, have access to the dashboard will know that there's barrier action in play, uh, particularly for dollar yen here at 150, which uh, I was beginning to suspect anyway, given the price action into the figure. Um, there are barriers in other pairs, uh, but uh, that's for subscribers and you'll get to, to know where those big barriers are and their effect on the prices uh, of the various currencies. Uh, but there we are, dollar yen, uh, there is a barrier at 150. We do have now, as I say, a potential green light for it to continue higher. I think if it knocks out that barrier, um, we probably might be heading close to uh, 151 not long after, um, unless they just want to trip it up, hit some stops, and then uh, all pile into shorts again. Um, we can stop looking now, okay, can't we, at uh, all the uh, TWIs, the nears, the rears, and uh, everything else? <laughs> uh, unless... Unless they intervene, and then say like the the near is lower than last year. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, I was actually pretty um, not certain. We never certain in markets, but uh, watching those things very very closely because it did look like um, as soon as we dipped below the TWY um, uh, of last year, they they started to up the rhetoric, but. Um, yeah, um, so I think we can uh, throw it all in the bin. That's one uh, one less uh, uh, indicator to uh, to watch. And we had been saying it already that the volatility was not there. And actually, if you look at it over the past um, sessions, we had the, we had that, that that activity over over the end of month. Um, and I reckon, um, as I said last week, they upped their um, comments because they probably knew uh, what was coming uh, for for a yen selling end of month um, but now this hump is over we have not yet accelerated um, we had the the of course the the 
uh, non-shutdown reaction in, uh, in in the US dollar across the board, um, putting dollar yen as well uh, a, a bit higher, but a lot less than others. If you look at uh, all the yen crosses are lower. So that was the intervention fear, but uh, but also I think the the we had various technical levels on uh, on on yen crosses where um, it seemed to be enough for now. Bit of false breakouts in uh, in one and the other. And now starting to correct. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as dollar yen is concerned, um, we there's two things we will have to to watch, right? <clears throat> there's one. Is it going to pick up speed for one, just because of speculation? And two, uh, we are now in those four days, uh, we're starting those four days of pretty heavy jobs, labor market data in the US. Um, it could be that uh, we're starting to see some weakness um, happen and, and, and that will naturally curb some of this, uh, this dollar strength, weigh a little bit on the yields and, uh, and, and everything maybe really calming down for the yen on, on the yen pressure um, because bad numbers, bad state of the economy is usually not too bad for, for stuff like the yen uh, as well. But in turn, if we start to hold and um, those those data do not come in weaker um, and then we have, what do, what do we have? The kicker on the ISM coming out as well on Wednesday, tomorrow. Um, if if all those things uh, are holding up, then then I reckon we are uh, we are back on the uh, on the train for a higher dollar yen, really, um, and uh, and then the speculators may come out of the woods and and really try and go and test them, right? Because Suzuki just gave them a bit of a bit of a stick to get uh, to hit them to hit him with. Yeah, I mean it's it's definitely clear. You can see you know the difference between um, yen pairs now you know, over the, the same period. It's a lot of it is seems to be dollar that's having an effect. You know, Euro yen was holding up, but you know, it's it's not making fresh highs. It had made fresh highs, but it's not following the same since we've come into September. Um, you know, a lot of the other yen pets which were, you know, heading up uh, in August, but now it's it's a bit of a different picture. Um dollar yen is just on its grind. Now, okay, we He's come out and said they're not worried about the yen level. But if this grinds up to 160, no, even no. if it's over the course of a, another month or two, it's got to come to a point where the level will be yeah, yeah, an yeah. issue for them. Oh, yes, definitely. I mean, there's there's no, no doubt that um, if we go above the prior high, let's say, above that 152 already, I think there's, there's going to be... Uh, unless it comes with a massively big dollar elsewhere. I mean, if 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 dollar yen is, is, is at 152, but you're a dollar is trading at 102, there's probably very little they can do, really. Um, or if cable is trading 117, you know, just as examples, um, there's there's very little they can do with uh, with interventions. But if it goes on its own, yeah, oh, no, there's that's definitely going to be reactions even even on a on a grind but um um yeah. I, I suppose that's when we get the, the speculation comments dropping yeah in. that we will have to look for that line again that that is going to be the line again um if they say that they determined that uh, the move is speculative uh, then usually uh, the next hours or the day after it's uh, it's being go right yeah, exactly. And uh, all right, well, she'll keep an eye on it. Um, I'm, I'm still long this one. I was getting a bit nervous up at 150, but now these comments uh, are out. I'm happy to stay long and I'm going to look to play a break of this 150 if it blows. Uh, you know, now there's a barrier there. It's a big fat target. Um, the dip has been bought up uh, pretty quickly. We did get a dip uh, into the 60s and that's been hoovered up. So, uh, yeah. Sitting here right now, I think uh, we have a greater chance of busting this uh, than, than holding it at the moment. Uh, but we shall wait and see. You never know what happens in these markets. Right, moving on. Uh, the RBA, um, they gave their printers uh, an easy job this week or this month. Uh, pretty much a copy and paste of the last statement after keeping rates unchanged. Some further tightening the monetary policy may be required. Pause allows time to assess the impact of rate hikes. Same old, same old from probably what I think the last two, three statements now. Mm. Um, so no real change there. Uh, Bullock not uh, looking to 
upset any apple carts uh, on that one. Um, Beery's man says she's a hawk and uh, on interest rate policy, not uh, that we didn't know that already, sees more resilient domestic demand in the economy uh, and monetary policy only recently became restrictive. Uh, over to those clowns at the ECB. Um, <laughs> I like this headline. Uh, well, the first one, ECB Simca says inflation on its way down uh, and then says the prompt response of monetary policy was effective. Um, <laughs> talk about uh, over egg in the pudding. If, uh, if you're having a prompt policy response, um, you're not hiking rates by 25 pips, then 75 pips, then 50 pips uh, increments. You're doing it slow and steady, well in advance of the problem, not chasing your ass after it. So uh, load of cobblers from him there. Um, ECB's chief economist, Philip Lane, says food inflation is still a substantial issue. Services inflation is now a big contributor and that the upward pressure on inflation from wages remains. Um, now, there's not many ECB bods seeing wages as a pressure, but uh, Lane seems to think so, and I think he's probably right about that. Um, ECB's Holtzman says that they are to discuss ending PEP reinvestments at the next governing council meetings. Um, which ones they are, we don't know. Um, but uh, that's coming up for discussion, it seems. Had been brushed under the carpet at recent meetings. Um, can be seen as a form of uh, further tightening if they're going to increase QT and uh, drain in the uh, balance sheet. Um, ECB's Velamaki, uh, who you may not have heard of, he's standing in uh, for the Bank of Finland, uh, Oli Wren, who's uh, looking to become uh, president or PM. So uh, he's off on a political path. So the stand-in Velamaki says further rate hikes can't be ruled out, uh, whether we want to take his word for it uh, depends on whether he gets a job or not. Right, yeah, um, he's something, yeah. He's a replacement. Yeah, he's been one, of, one, of, one of the most hawkish uh, ECB members, so he had to uh, he had to say relatively the same thing, right? Yeah, stick to the stick to the plan. Um, he's probably uh, got his feet up on Oli Ben's desk and for his notes. Um, right, looking at uh, some of the data, go back to yesterday first. Um, we had the. Uh, ISM numbers coming out. Uh, well, the, SMP, the final S&P number came out better than expected by almost uh, a whole big figure, 49.8 versus 48.9 flash, higher than last month, not quite breaking into that expansion 50 level. Um, as you can see there, the CAD number uh, also coming up a tiny bit worse on that one. Um, the ISM was a decent number as well. Um, Improvement, didn't, again, didn't break into expansion, 49, but beating expectations, 47.7, and also much higher than last month. These were very soft landing numbers. Prices paid, dropping quite a bit to 43.8. Uh, was expected to rise two ticks to 48.6. Um, men, uh, employment, look at that, moving well into expansion, um, which followed what we saw from uh, the S&P PMI uh, in the flash number where some of the numbers were a bit gloomy underneath, but they said that employment uh, was at the highest since May. Uh, that's been echoed in the ISM. So still, we're not potentially seeing any problems coming in the jobs market. So they're getting low inflation, more jobs. Um, it's soft landing music for the Fed. Um, from that, we got... Uh, Fed's Bowman out saying that uh, expects it to be appropriate to raise rates further. A bit of a repeat, one of the uh, more hawkish on the Fed board. Uh, the frequency and scope of recent data revisions complicates the task of projecting how economies will evolve. So a bit of a moan up at the data there and uh, what comes out in the first number and then how much it's revised by. Uh, maybe they'll borrow Bernanke back uh, after he's finished uh, sorting out forecasts at the BOE. Anyway, um, says remains willing to support rate increases at a future meeting if the data indicates progress on inflation has stalled or is too slow to return it to 2% in a timely way. Uh, Fed's power was out as well. Nothing really hot from him, uh, says the Fed's ambition 
is a sustained and strong labour market. And to get that, price stability is needed. Uh, and the Fed is very focused on achieving that. Well, as I said, those uh, ISM numbers fall right into those categories. Uh, Fed's bar says the most important question is how long rates stay high. And uh, he agrees with Powell that we can proceed carefully on rates. Uh, Fed's Mester, another one banging the hawkish drum, says we'll likely need one more rate hike this year uh, because inflation remains too high. Um, that's been it. Quite morning this morning. Um, I did get a few uh, little bits and pieces out uh, over Asia. Uh, Swiss also had the CPI report. We saw CPI ticking up uh, a little bit. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, ticking up a little bit to 1.7. Not as much as expected. Uh, 1.8. Um, the Eurozone measure also ticked up, if I double check that, uh, ticked up to uh, 2%, I think. So getting to the top of uh, the SMB's target there. Um, keep an eye on that one in case uh, inflation is picking up there as well. Okay, anything crossing your uh, peepers? Um, no, you covered most of it. On the RBA, we had uh, the impression um, just before Lowe's last meeting uh, that uh, Bullock was preparing to be a bit more of a hog. And then uh, finally, she decided once she's really in the seat to just continue uh, with uh, with what uh, the RBA printed in the, in the past month. Perhaps she had a uh, she didn't have much time to do uh, prepare anything herself. I just said like, okay, let's do a copy paste of uh, the prior statement. But um, no, so perhaps there is the slight, slight um, more dovish surprise in, uh, in, in the RBA um, statement that uh, Bullock may have sounded a little bit more hawkish, but um, that is not... Um, that is not uh, what uh, what happened in the rest. Uh, really, um, there's very little market moving um, going on. Um, there was an article uh, uh, um, and an interview with ECB Holtzman out um, that apparently rates are going to be less of a of a present um, subject on the next ECB meeting, but. Uh, what they do with the uh, PEPP, PEPP, sorry, reinvestments are um, going to be more important in the next meeting. So that may be a little hint from one of the hawks saying that over the next meeting there shouldn't be, uh, we shouldn't be expecting much from uh, from the ECB um, apart from on the uh, uh, QE QT front. So, but for the rest, it's been uh, extremely quiet. Huh? The rest is all uh, everybody having an, uh, a, an opinion about uh, how bad Sunak is uh, doing, uh, how uh, how Bank of England should not use QE too much anymore for the next crisis. But it's it's all like uh, opinion pieces. Nothing that really uh, moves the market. I think we are. We can start to safely look ahead at uh, what's going to happen to the uh, US jobs market. Yeah, yeah, very much so. So not really any move of note uh, on the RBA in the Aussie versus uh, the dollar. Um, are getting down. We, we did sort of uh, just get close to the big figure, 63 down there and that uh, trend line low there. But uh, as you can see, the bounce so far this morning uh, is already evaporating. Um, we managed to get, uh, oh, what was that? A whole uh, 24 pips higher odd before uh, we've started to pull back. Um, Aussie Kiwi is one I'm keeping half an eye on. Um, again, we've got some trend line action down here. Um, looking at maybe playing something between the RBA. I was looking perhaps to see if they were a bit uh, more hawkish or gave us anything more hawkish at the RBA. Because um, I did... Uh, was I in for maybe a move back to 108 to, to sell on a potentially more hawkish um, RBNZ, which is uh, tonight. Um, and funny enough, I, I took that up uh, with Mr. Michael Brown at uh, Pepperstone on the trade-off. And uh, that was last night. That's published. So I've just put the link uh, for you in the chat there if you want to go and uh, have a butcher's at that. Uh, just a bit of a play, as I say, on the Aussie Kiwi that I'm looking at. But in the meantime, we are close to this uh, support down uh, 
106, 70, 80 area trend line coming in there. So if nothing happens over the RBNZ, then uh, I might look at it from this side, um, but we shall wait and see uh, what happens uh, with that one. Um, it's pretty much the same story around a lot of pairs. Um, you know, we've gone through the 105 now in uh, Euro dollar. Um, the bounce, again, isn't looking too hot. Uh, we're just managing about 20, 30 pips off of that low down into the 60s. Now we need to see what happens up here. Um, you know, we're already sort of finding a bit of resistance around these, these original lows that we saw and then the secondary low yesterday before we really made the breakthrough. So a bit of traffic here, but it's, for me, it's all about that 105 again. Um, if we get up there, hold it and stay below, then that's going to suggest we're going to see the same sort of thing we've seen all the way down. Um, we saw it at 107, the break, hold, little nicks above, but staying below. We saw the same at 106, couldn't get back above significantly, and then another leg lower. So the pattern in play that we've seen for quite some time now, um, pretty much since the summer, is keep heading lower, keep heading lower. Now, at some point, it's going to stop, obviously, um, but, uh, you know, we're in the knife catching mode or if you're in knife catching mode, it's a still a dangerous game at the moment. Um, so, yeah, this area here is going to be important. Stay below that. I might even think about nicking into to shorts on this one just to see if we continue lower. Um, but be mindful that we have come a long way yet. But like all trends, we can go much further. You know, look at the trend from September, how far that went. So, again, pick your levels if you want to try catching those knives. we got uh, the Fib coming in uh, down at the 104 handle. Uh, keep an eye on that one. Bit of an intermediate on-off area around uh, 104.5, just to keep an eye on that one as well. Um, but judge your levels. What, one thing you should do when looking at the charts, if you've got several levels in play, rate them. Rate them for their potential strength. Um, you know, and then... The ones you feel are the most strongest, those are the ones you should look to trade, um, particularly when you're seeing strong moves like we are now. Um, this is also a time where the market tends to ignore the techs. If it's going to be buying dollars and a lot of dollars, you don't care about your fibs and your moving averages and your this, that and the others. Um, if it's got dollars to buy, it's going to buy them and uh, buy them until it's finished buying them, wherever that may finish. Um, cable. A lot of eyes on this fib, and uh, where we went through it pretty easily. Um, I think we stopped there for about two hours, by my account, looking at that, um, just as we got down to it. So around about there. So we stopped there for a couple of hours, and then we broke. But again, we've had a low, we've had a bounce. Now the levels come into play again, um, but the bounce still looks pretty weak. You know, 30, 40 pips at uh, not even that. So. We're now below the 121, which is a former level. All these pairs, all these dollar pairs are looking very similar. Um, so what you can do is you can use that low as your marker now. If we get back down there, test it, it holds. Well, it gives you a bit of conviction to maybe try along and, and try catching that knife. But you don't want to be giving it a lot of room on that, you know, 15, 20 pip stop at most. Um, so if it does break, you're not going to do a lot of damage. And if you get the bounces, you know where you need to start taking your profits off um, into 121s and then get some money off the table, put some in the bank, leave a little bit of the position on, see what it wants to do that. And if uh, it does break 121, well, fine, you try and ride it as much as you can. But um, as I say, you want to try catching those knives, do it as safe as possible. Um, I've not uh, really got much else I'm looking at. Dollar CAD. Um, I managed to grab a scalp on this one on that data. That ISM data came out and the dollar got sold off, um, which we all noted in the room was a was a pretty strange reaction, Kay, uh, seeing that happen. Um, so I nipped into uh, a small scalp off this uh, 136.50 on that dip, uh, and uh, it's been fortunate to uh, carry on, though I've got out most of it uh, around here, uh, but I'm holding a little piece uh, just to see what it does. Um, but this one, again, you know, we're not trading Canadian fundamentals here. Um, we're trading what's going on in the dollar. And the dollar at the moment is cleaning house, cleaning the levels. Um, we're up through that trend line as well. So, again, the techs aren't counting for toffee. 
didn't even blink at the 136.50 on the way back up. Um, hasn't blinked at any of the other levels. So sometimes you just got to not fight it. Sit back, see where it wants to go. Let the price action tell you where it's going to hit its head. 138, 38.10 is going to be a level. Um, then into uh, 138.60s should we get up that far. Okay, you got uh, anything on your radar? Oh, I've got plenty on my radar, as you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I always don't... have plenty on my radar. I'm, I'm going to... Um... Let me let me hand it over, because I just want to test uh, yeah, my sure, thing. Uh, screen. How's that? Yeah, very nice. Good. Brilliant. They moved. They moved the buttons on my Chrome machine. <laughs> ah. Why would I do that? To, uh, why would they do that? To, to oh, it's the usual. Oh, let's update it and uh, change everything. Uh, right. This morning. Um, so, despite the dollar wrecking ball uh, continuing to to hit all currencies. Um, the, the, the differentials haven't really widened uh, with, with the euro specifically. And if you look at what's happening, the euro dollar stabilized at very low levels, of course, and, and, and uh, the, the move is likely, I would say, not over yet because the dollar is, is very strong, but we will have very important uh, jobs data out for the rest of the week, as I already said, plus the uh, ISM. So we need to keep an eye on this one for further developments in uh, in the uh, euro dollar. But stabilizing here uh, has had a little bit of a result. And the result is that euro crosses are higher, um, which is quite, uh, um, I wouldn't say amazing or really surprising, but um, um, it, it probably has to do with a, a bit with liquidity as well, uh, perhaps not as bad not more bad data coming out of uh, coming out of euroland perhaps um almost of the bad numbers uh, in there so um uh, euro is now um after having done uh, a fresh low which is relatively important by the way um is is stabilizing and uh, and euro crosses have taken over so look at this euro dollar um and we are around those prior lows. Um, th there's also prior highs, prior lows in here. And then if you zoom in a little bit, um, this leg higher from the 106 is up to the 112. If you uh, if you look at the 127%, I know, I mean, I've got quite a few things, one on top of each other. I should clean up my charts one, one of these days. Um, it's at 104.63, um, give and take a couple of pips. What's the low in euro dollar today? 104.60, so here we go. I think that's going to be a relatively important level here, this 104.60 as well. So this 60.80 zone on the euro dollar, I reckon is going to be important enough to monitor for the um, for the end of this day uh, already, and, and, and even more importantly, over the next few days, when when those those labor uh, reports will come out in the, in the U.S., because as we know, and as we've been re repeatedly saying here, it's this this the jobs market is is one of the very very big dominoes that is still standing in uh, in the U.S. and that um, central bankers pride themselves and politicians pride themselves on saying that the um, U.S. economy is doing very well. So. That means that we have to watch it extremely carefully. We're seeing like really cracks appearing this week. Um, we may be in for a bit of a dollar retracement, perhaps with uh, with yields lower. Until then, don't change a winning team. US yields higher. Um, you look at even the, the, the long end. The, the long end is really pushing, pushing higher. And that has also as a result that um, the yield curve is inverting less and less. Now, if we would be in a positive yield, uh, 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 yield curve, uh, a yield curve that, that steepens is usually good for, uh, good for dollars. And we're seeing it in this market that even with an inverted, uh, inverted yield curve, this, uh, this uh, less of an inversion, um, this uh, bear steepening is already uh, having, is still having an effect as well on the, on the on the the dollar and uh, look where we are 
in the, and this is a weekly uh, a weekly picture right 484 here that is 2010 the high after after the global financial crisis and the 30 year is pushing into that um into that level right now we're at 482 so that's another one that we are going to uh, to have to monitor apart from the 10 years and then the 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 difference between the, the yields and, and US yields versus the others. This is another one we need to monitor um, going further into this week, okay? If the long end holds up, it's usually pretty decent as well for um, for dollar, okay? Um, now, I, I wanna go straight away into Ali's question about uh, gold. So we've had this big breakdown, okay? Um, everybody knows it's been a, a very, very, um, aggressive move um, last week of the of the month and um, last month and and we had the acceleration on Friday and then yesterday. Before I look at really the the levels here, I want to say something about um, which could be seasonal effect or whatever. We know that over the past months and in and in the whole move up and even those smaller move ups, we, we had um, news, whispers, rumors, or, or confirmation that China and, and, and their suit were, were regularly buying, uh, buying the metals, uh, especially gold, they, they love gold. And we are in golden week. And I think the lack of Chinese buyers has something to do with this and some market participants well, I mean, people handling those flows basically must have been aware of it. And uh, and and I think one of the reasons why gold and all the precious metals lost um, so much uh, terrain is, is mainly due to the strong dollar, but also because of the lack of um, buyers and uh, lack of people who are interested to, to continue to accumulate. So um, if you're trading gold, if you're trading metals, and uh, there's not too much of a turnaround before the end of the week. Have a look towards the end of the week where we are in gold and then monitor very closely what happens next Monday when they come back online. Okay, that is something that I'm going to uh, to watch at least. Um, in the meantime, uh, Ali, you're short. It's, we, we're trading around a bit of a level here. I, I'd say your uh, really um, point of... Um, to monitor here is look we this is the 50 percent here of this whole move that we had from september november last year into may um of this year and we are below this 50 percent so as long as we are below this 50 percent i reckon that the texts are going to tell you that this still has room or 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 will likely continue to be heavy um, it's possible, it's very possible. Um, your next level is here, the prior lows, of course, around the 18, uh, 1805. And then your 61.8 um, of the of that move in the 1780s. Uh, I wouldn't even dare to imagine that this, this triangle would, would have some sort of a target because that would take us all the way down into the 1600s. But let's, let's uh, do this uh, one step at a time. I don't think that this is really a reasonable to uh, to expect right now but of course we never know if those yields hit five percent in the tens um this could really dump a lot further but a few things to um to take into account there so i reckon this is 1841 stretchy to 1845 because that's another fit from before um may come into play so 1445 is your uh, resistance area on uh, on gold okay that's uh, what i think about it uh, and then you can look at this uh, this low 1805. But um, keep those um, US data in mind because they they may have a, a, an impact on uh, and start to have an impact on yields, whether it's positive or negative, of course. Silver had this monster breakdown. Um, I had some bits in here around 2060, and of course, this market doesn't really like what I'm trying to do lately. Um, I was trying to, to start to accumulate a little bit into this support zone uh, with the low around 20 and a quarter, um, and, and trying to buy some for a bit of a jobbing activity, thinking we may 
have gone a little far too fast. Uh, but I unfortunately didn't get them. I'm still going to be very interested seeing where we are um, through all those reports that we see out of out of the US. I pulled my bid right now. I'm, I'm just going to watch it live. But I'm going to be interested here, and I'm for sure going to be interested if ever we start to get into this very, very big traffic zone here. And here I'm really looking to to push to add to my to my long term uh, long term position because I reckon in the end it's it's sooner or later going to uh, to turn around. But we have to be very 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 careful with uh, with what we do right now because it's going really very very fast. Um, yeah, the dollar cat is uh, has finally broken this uh, this resistance area. We tried a good few times. We never managed to break this trend line, but now we are. Okay, so this 137 is going to be your um, your level to monitor on the close of, of virtually every day today um, with uh, oil in mind, energy in mind, oil, gas. Um, and we have the double whammy at the end of the week, right? For the um, Canadian, uh, do we have Canadian labor report as well on Friday? Yes, mate. Double oh, whammy. Alrighty, so uh, that's going to be perhaps a, a, a big level um, right into the end of this week on, on both US Canadian data and um, what's happening in the uh, oil and gas uh, uh, world. Okay, so this is important enough. If you start to get back under 136.45.50, I think the party may be over and then we're going to go uh, lower again. But in the meantime, those levels that Ryan already mentioned before cannot be excluded of course if we uh, continue to uh, to rally in the dollar cat um as i was mentioning in the room this morning it's uh, a festival on some of those euro crosses um euro aussie he, after uh, this this spike that we saw spike lower that we saw towards the end of uh, last week is really um ramping higher and i already showed on the stabilizing differentials here that we have between uh, the US and the EU that may be one of the explanation the other one is that of course um commodities have been uh, have been finding tops and trading a bit weaker um but we have to be careful what we do here with this uh, euro Aussie and some other euro euro crosses 166 and a half prior high prior low prior low prior low uh here we overshot a little bit but uh, 166 um, 40, 50, 40, 55 important zone, I think, on the on the Euro Aussie, all right? So um, Euro could just stabilize a bit more versus the, the, the dollar. But if the rest of those uh, uh, currencies get hammered, um, those Euro crosses may do, uh, may do well. In the meantime, respect the level, okay, until we break. Um, I was going to show something more. Yeah, just have a look at the S&P, okay? I think that's interesting. We're trying to, um, perhaps my line is not, yeah, it's pretty pretty accurate, pretty accurate, let's put it that way. Um, we're trying to hold the channel, guys and girls. We're trying to hold this, this wider channel after the overshoot back inside. We're trying to hold this channel that we started to, uh, to develop from October last, uh, last year, and we are holding right now. So over, in the course of the week, watch what's happening. Forty-two thirty-five fifty on the on the uh, on the S and P. A um, lot of people are talking about the forty-two level, of course. I've got a perhaps a tad below there. Call it one forty-one ninety figure, and then uh, more people talking about the possible target of this this whole move being into the one into the thirty-nines. But therefore, we're going to, and that's going to be the paradoxical move, I think. Um, reports on the job market that that are taking the yields so much higher that the uh, the, the equities uh, have to have to come off and i'm probably going to have a problem with this move if it comes due to a very good labor market because if you have good econo economy even with the yields rising there may be a mechanical effect an algo correlation effect for stocks trading lower but I'm starting to think if this whole card house holds up in the, in the US, 
but this algo or correlation driven market takes the, the the stock market a bit lower i'm going to start to be uh, a bit a bit interested here to um to counter trade it um for this to rally we need numbers that are perhaps a little disappointing if you take it on the correlation side but not too disappointing for it to become an economic crisis because then i'll be looking at selling any rallies if it's really if we are really going in crisis mode in the, in the US, because then uh, to me, the equity markets are not going to hold up. So again, in this one, very interesting uh, zones we are on. Um, keep an eye on 43.30, 35, 43.50 on the top side. If that starts to go, that means that your channel is reinforced again, I reckon, and, uh, and we can move uh, a bit higher again. Um, it's a about it uh, right now. You showed the dollar yen already, right? Uh, next, uh, yeah. next one is 150 and 150, 50, 75 on on the dollar yen. Uh, and keep an eye on the speed. Um, all the yen pairs have been uh, correcting, but we are hold on one second. But we are holding the the range in the euro yen. Okay, so that's that's partially that euro thing as well that is going on. Oh yeah, one we need to keep a close eye on is Kiwi Yen. Kiwi Yen, we have this very long-term trend line I already showed last week and it's been uh, getting increasingly popular in the market. Uh, Blake already talked about it, other people mentioning it. We had a bit of a spike above, went up to even into the 90s, but then failed. And now we are starting to come off on this uh, on, on this um, Kiwi Yen. So it may be... Uh, a fakey breaky and uh, and and um, this one we will see after the uh, RBNZ where we are. I think RBNZ is going to keep their rates at five and a half percent. They could be a bit more hawkish, but they're already at five and a half percent. I don't think that they will really uh, increase rates. And and Kiwi is actually looking a bit uh, weak uh, right now. Um, so yeah, keep an eye on this one. So it's going to be affected as well by the RBNZ, as well by the takes, and as well by the MOF, of course, in Japan, uh, whether to see if they let the party continue in dollar yen or not. And with that, I'm going to give it back to you, Ryan. I could show a lot more, but uh, that's that's all right, I reckon. Yeah, thanks, mate. I'm just going to grab it back uh, oh, quickly. Hold on. Hold on, oh, I just oh, want to oh, show oh. one, one last one, okay? Because I think you were mentioning about this SMB and the uh, and the uh, the CPI. I, I do yeah. think the CPI is is pretty comfortably within their range. Um, and and the month on month came down a little bit. And I still like uh, for as long as as Euro Swiss stays above 95, 90 figure. I, I still like this. Um, I know we are. Uh, struggling with this this trend line and the levels here, but that's because the market is still a bit afraid of the SMB. I do think though that SMB should be gradually, gradually less involved in in actively in the in the Swiss franc um, right now. So I think for as long as we're above this 95, 90 figure, I I kind of like uh, um, Euro Swiss. Back over to you, mate. Thank you, mate. Uh, let me just grab it quickly. Because just something you uh, said, and I think it's very apt for traders, you know, about cleaning up the charts and things. Um, I often have duplicate charts, just ones where I keep a, a longer term picture on. And for that, um, dollar yen is a big one. Because one thing I like about dollar yen is when you get these big fib levels. I mean, these are, you know, decade long fib levels. Um, where did we have the 38.2 of this move? And I'm, I'm more interested in, in the yellow fib than the white one, but uh, I'll keep it on there because there is a few years between the two moves here. Um, but this has been, I've had this chart, or uh, these levels up on charts for ages. It's 38.2, 152.71. Didn't quite get there, um, but when you're looking at uh, this amount of time, it's, uh, you know, get up to 152 is, is fairly close enough. Um, it is a level on its own. Um, as you can see, there's a bit of prior history here, going back into 87. So these big fibs are often worth just keeping an eye on. And we're obviously up near 150. We're very close to this fib as well. Um, got to do a lot of waiting. It can take a long while to get here, but you see that. And that would mark a significant double top if we do 
find a bit of trouble into that uh, and we hold it there. Um, but back to Kay's point, yeah, you know, sometimes it's worth just opening up a fresh chart with nothing on it uh, and just picking your levels again um, or taking an old chart uh, and just clearing it all out. Um, you know, sometimes there's certain levels that stick in your mind that you put straight back on, you know, 105 euro dollar, 114, 115 euro dollar, um, just off the top of my head, big levels, big multi-year levels that you, you keep on your charts all the time. But uh, having a refresh uh, can do you the world of good. Um, and something like trading view is pretty good for that because you can obviously open up, you know, multiple charts in the same pairings. Um, well, as a lot of platforms do as well, but uh, it's quite easy to do in this one. Um, and it just makes it easier to take a cleaner look at things, you know, like Euro dollar, like cable. You can just get a bit of a, a wider picture on things, looking at the longer time frames to see what we're doing in the bigger picture. Um, and if you wanted to, uh, if you didn't know, I'll put a link in the uh, chat as well, because if you don't use TradingView, um, if you take up an annual sub via that link there, you can get some free time to our Forex Analytics platform. Um, we've got a, an affiliate deal with those guys. So if uh, you haven't been a customer before, you can look at that and uh, as well as getting a good price on the sub, you can uh, come and spend some time with us in the, the chat room for a period. So check that out as well. Um, right. We'll call that a day, I think. Um, yes, I am premium at TradingView. Um, and that link there, Ali, will get you, uh, will get you. well, there's various levels of uh, subscription there for annual subscription. Um, as I say, it's uh, get you into uh, the Forex Analytics platform uh, for a while. But uh, yeah. Anyway, that's it for today. Uh, keep an eye on that Jolts number. It, <laughs> Jolts is a funny one. Um, we're just looking to see if the trend is continuing. I'm, I don't think we're going to see any huge moves unless there's a real big variation. It's more just seeing if these openings continue to fall. Um, look at the quits and separations number within that jolts number. The quits number is something I look at to see if people are happy to trade up jobs. You know, they feel confident about the jobs market. They'll look to get a better job, higher wages. Um, if that number's coming down, that can suggest that people may be a little fearful of changing jobs at the moment because they're not too keen on the environment, um, which is, again, is a bit of a negative uh, for the jobs market. And obviously, separations um, tells you uh, people being let go uh, and leaving. So that's what's important in those numbers. Anyway, have a great day, everybody. Uh, we shall see you all tomorrow for another show. Thank you very much. Cheers, Kay. Uh Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.